Hi there, folks. My name is Emily. And I'm Elk. And we are Oh My Word, a podcast where we discuss books, movies, musicals, television series, etc., and talk about the content so that you know what you're getting into before you get into it. Right. And that's why we developed... After years and years of research, years of research, I say, years, years of research, we have developed our pearl clutching scale, which rates violence, language, and romance on the pearl clutching scale in a very scientific, very, very scientific manner. Zero to four, zero being excellent, because the less pearls clutched, the better your content is, right? They're not a quality, content is. And four is just too many pearls are being clutched. Can we even fit it in our hands anymore? There's so many pearls being clutched. We don't know. Right. Yeah. Danger to pearls occur after four pearls are being clutched. And we can't have that. No. So that's how we do it. I mean, a clam had to go through a lot of work or or an oyster to make that pearl happen. Yeah. Right? And to just cruelly clutch it at inappropriate content is is really disrespectful to the clam or the oyster or whatever it is where do pearls come from exactly that's where they come from and that's and that's why it is part of our mission to make sure that pearls are properly respected and not being overly clutched for inappropriate content i mean right. everyone can write whatever they want that's why we don't Everyone can write, you know, tell your story, write your story the way you want, but that doesn't mean we're not clutching pearls over it. Okay? So Correct. that it happens. It's real. Pearls are pearls are clutched for real. Yes. Yes. Now with that said, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that's a very clever way and unique way to be looking at content, but that's also a little bit different, right? It's like a little bit different. And why do I have this segue set up? <laughs> I'm getting looks at Emily. She's like banging her head against the wall right now, which the sound is not fully caring because this is a soundproof wall and she's just banging her head against padding. So that's why you can't hear it. But, <laughs> okay, here's a segue. Okay, what, do we have better? Uh, anyways, today we're talking about the Netflix adaptation of, um, um, a t- of a typical, a typical, a typical. Hey. I just said it 14 ways, and like it was the same way each time. <laughs> Anyways, so. A typical. It, right. A typical. <laughs> there you go. A typical. A typical. So it's about Sam, who's an 18 year old on the autism spectrum, and he decides it's time for him to have a girlfriend. Right. It's also his, uh, he goes to, it's, it's a therapist, right? It's not a psychiatrist. I think it's a therapist or a psychologist. I think it's a therapist. Mm. Kind of like encourages him, like, get yourself out there. You're normal. Even though you're on the autism spectrum, you're still normal enough to be part of like the regular world, you know, and normal to get enough. So he kind of takes that to like, oh, I should go start sleeping around with people, right? And then um, it's a journey that sets Sam's mom on her own life changing path as her son seeks more independence. Because the mom, her whole life has been about, oh, well, Sam's special, Sam's different, Sam's whatever. So we always have to do things for Sam. And all of a sudden she's like, wait, he's starting to like explore his own things. What do I do with myself now, right? My whole identity was around being Sam's, looking out for Sam. So... That's that. Now, I actually only got through, I think, the first episode of this because after that first episode, I was like, this is not really my style. <laughs> this is not to my taste. This is not my, my liking stuff. Um, but then I did read up on what the rest of, where the rest of the series went. Um, mm-hmm. But, oh, so our, our scale is violence is a two, language is a four, romance is a three. Um, why did violence get a two? Um, because there's this scene, shoot, I probably should have written it down. There was a scene, I know people like make fun of him and kick him and tease him and beat him up, but maybe it's not really super violent. Oh, like a bullying sort of scene? Because of bullying sort of stuff? Yeah, there's definitely some sort of bullying scene, but also the bullying might, oh, uh, (laughs) his girlfriend does cut off her finger using a paper cutter. They don't really show it. So I guess violence is probably more like a one. Well, I know the sister also punches somebody. Um, yeah. In the first. But it's not really like a violent show. Right. You know, so. I don't know. Cutting off the finger is pretty. Just because it's only shown once or it's only referred to once doesn't mean it doesn't get a high violence rating. Because you, in 
True. It kind of like high five did, which is actually a bad analogy to say for someone who cut off their finger. <laughs> they they can sew it back on. It's just like the tip of it, so she's fine. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, okay. I think we keep violence at a two. Okay. Lane is a four. Romus is a three. Yeah, because Sam also decides that he has to start sleeping with people. So that gets brought up a lot. Yes, and the mom, sex is a lot. Yeah. And the mom, can we say it? That the mom also... Okay, spoilers ahead. Spoiler, spoilers. Um, I think the mom ends up having an affair also. Which is like, why do they always do this? It's like, no, she's exploring her independent... Like, can they just once show someone who's about to have the affair and then walks away from it? Like, why do we not get more characters like that? Don't we want that from people? It's not always about showing what people are, but about showing what we want them to be like and, like, give them courage to, like, walk away. Okay, that was my meeting yeah. And then, <laughs> oh, just to know for romance also, they turn the sister turns, I think, bi or gay at the end. Which I think a lot of viewers were like, why did this happen? Like, it didn't even, like, there was no build-up to it. Like, because she had a boyfriend, I think, in the first two seasons, and all of a sudden the third season. They're like, oh, by the way, she's gay. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> Where did that come from? Right? Like, when it doesn't yeah. make sense, then, like... It's not about, oh, people are anti gay. Like, no, it's not about that. It's like, when it doesn't make sense, then people are going to be upset right. about the, the about the lack of logic. It's not, it doesn't even matter what you did. It's when there's no logic to it. Anyways. Right. That's Especially what I have to say because. About that. Yeah. <laughs> well, also in that case, because the relationship with her boyfriend is really cute and like he's a really good guy and he's trying to be a better guy for her. And then it's this, the girlfriend that she has at first. I didn't finish this. Well, I don't know if the series is finished. I think I got through this. I definitely got through the second season and maybe I stopped at the third season. Um, but the girl, it's like a really close friend of hers. Well, first they're like frenemies and then they become friends and then they discover that like they have feelings for each other. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it just, it sort of comes from nowhere and cause you already, you like the relationship she's already in. Like you're rooting for that relationship. So you don't really want, the relationship to change yeah. from anyone, like to a guy or to a girl. You don't want her to not be in that relationship because you like the first one. Um, so, but it does come out of nowhere. Like they wanted her to be with this girl. So they had to find a reason for her to break up with the guy. And it's sad because he's a really good guy. Oh, so the whole, yeah, the whole concept of the show is Sam needs to grow up. And so he decides, or his therapist decides, that the way he's going to grow up is by getting a girlfriend and having sex. And they specifically make him 18, which is good, because, like, foisting that plot upon a teenager. I mean, he's still a teenager, but, you know, like, legally an adult. If he were not legally an adult, it would be much worse. Uh, but Stage before age. Well, yes, but you definitely don't want it for... Yes. Like, a 15-year-old deciding, it's time for me to grow up. Let me go find a girlfriend and have sex, you know? But I was... He lived his whole life under his mother's loving thumb, right? Because she's, like, overly protective and loving of him. Are there not other ways that he can show his independence? And there do end up being other ways. You know, like, he moves out and he goes to college, which no one thought would happen and all these things. But, like, that the premise is him getting a girlfriend and having sex almost feels demeaning. Like, I think it's cool that they have the representation. They have an autistic main character that's different. You get inside his head. We get to hear his thought processes, how he looks at the world a little bit. So it's different. And then the whole thing is about getting a girlfriend and having sex as if that is, like, the indication that you're grown up and ready to take on the world by yourself, you know? Yeah. Why can't it just be about him, like, getting a job and becoming financially independent? Because that's, like, yeah. a really big deal. Yeah. Like, a huger deal. In fact, I think he actually has a job that he's been holding down for several years. He works at, like, a... Not exactly a Best Buy, but something along those lines. Right. So, here's a question for you, Elt. The show is about teens, right? He's a teen. His sister's a teen. They're the... They're the main characters. The parents are sort of supplemental. Is a show for, is a show supposed to be for teens if it's about teens? Like, is Netflix's goal with this show that it's for a young adult audience or is it for an adult audience and it just happens to be about young people? Oh, that's a very good question. Cause you know what? That comes up, that comes up in books also. 
Yes. Because it makes it a difference, I think. I mean, I still, yes. you know, we still would clutch our pearls because of the content. And once you start talking about teenagers having sex, it's still uncomfortable, whether, well, probably more uncomfortable if it's for adults than for kids. But I think there's a lot of TV shows and books that are about teens, but because of what the teens are engaged in, I think it's uh, questionable whether or not it's actually meant for teens. Though it does seem like usually books, the main characters in books are about the same age as the intended readers. Right. Well, so here's the thing. In books, you do have sometimes like it's racked, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's shelved under adult novel and the main character or one of the main characters is still a teen. There's also always, um, actually one spoke to screenwriter. His name is Aaron. I apologize. I don't remember his name. His name is Aaron something. And I always, for, for, I always confuse his last name. Um, but he wrote like the Airbun movies. And for him, mm. this thing is that, um, you know, if you have an interesting, just because you're writing for kids doesn't mean the adult character shouldn't be interesting too, right? Mm. Because they still have to be characters, right? That doesn't mean you have to like go off, right? So there's there's that. But here's the thing. So sure, you can say that like, oh, because the mom's such a big character in this, you know, the, the kid, Sam doesn't get top billing. The guy who plays him does not get top billing. Um, right. The, there's, the sister, I think, gets top billing in this or the mom gets top billing in this. So you could say, oh, but then you describe the show as being about Sam, right? So it kind of gets... There's this whole like messy tentacle spaghetti thing that's going on here. <laughs> but your biggest thing is that the bottom line is that you do have a large focus on teens. So that means teens are going to find this, you know? So I don't know that you could get away with, oh, but we shelved it under as an excuse. Um, I'm like, sure, that might protect you from like, you know, well, Netflix doesn't have, um, Netflix doesn't have, um, does it have to be part of the rating? Like they do like their own thing for ratings. They don't have to have official ratings for it. I think just like mm. 13 plus, but just because you don't have it, like whatever. Anyway, I'm looking right now actually to see what it's, um, what Netflix uh, shelves it under. They mm -hmm. put it under, oh, there's four seasons altogether. Yeah. Teen TV shows, TV dramas, TV okay. comedies. So it's interesting because though it starts off being about Sam, like all TV shows, Especially in the second season, though this one I felt like even in the first season, because in the first season is when the mom has the affair, it's ostensibly about Sam. Like, he's the main character. Yeah. But that ends up being so dramatic with, like, the mom's affair and the sister and her boyfriend and then how the mom and the dad are dealing with the affair. I do kind of like, I don't totally remember how the whole affair resolves, but I kind of like that the dad is angry. It's not just like, I don't know, I thought it was dealt with in a real way, like they were working with each other, but also like, but you've also done this thing and I'm not just going to move on and forgive you for it. Not that I think people shouldn't be forgiven, I just thought that the way they dealt with it felt a little bit different, at least maybe, from other TV shows where there are affairs, which seems to be a lot of TV shows where there are affairs. Um, but... You're right. It's a. It's interesting because it's about Sam, but then it really, and maybe that wasn't enough to sustain it. You know, maybe they realize, okay, we have these interesting characters and this sort of interesting premise, but actually Sam is not enough to sustain this show on his own, like his journey. Also, like he kind of gets a girlfriend fairly quickly, so yeah. it's um, yeah. And I guess it happens with TV shows, right? They have an idea, and then they figure it out and then they have to sometimes adapt as certain characters become more popular to the audience or they realize some a storyline doesn't have maybe like the staying power that they anticipated right yeah i guess it's also um he, his best friend because he works at like an apple store right or he works at a tech store or best buy then i don't know if they specify but he works at it some sort of tech store so you could see also oh yeah right so he does have the job so you see also mm -hmm. that he's got the things that he's good at and things like that. But he also has to have the best friend who's the player, right? It almost feels like when there's like a girl romantic comedy, girl-centric, the, the girl has to have a gay friend, a gay guy friend who like directs her in the world. And then when it's like mm -hmm. the guy, he has to have the player friend, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of just generalized there, but it almost feels like that's like a thing. Like, oh, like the setup. 
And it's like, first of all, right. it doesn't like, I don't even know if that really works in the world. Like, not every girl who needs to find a romantic interest has a gay friend, like, guiding her. Like, does it, right. just because it works well in film, doesn't mean it's like real life. But it's also like, why does the guy, there always has to be like the player. Like, are we supposed to be rooting for the player friend? Because being a player is not like, I'm like, it might be a guy thing, but it's not a good thing. Like, and right. why do, are women supposed to find that attractive if a guy's a player? Like, why would someone think it's attractive to like just hook up with a guy who's just gonna, who's not calling you the next day? Like, right. I don't, I don't understand it. Like, it's one thing if you're like, oh, he's so suave and he's rich or whatever, you know, the tall, dark, handsome thing, like, fine, whatever. But that's not like a player. That's just, you know, he's got the tall, the tall dark and handsome, right? Or whatever it is. But it's like the player, like, again, like, are we supposed to root for him as a character? I don't. I mean, he's our main character. He's our protect. Well, the supposed main character's best friend, but like, I like I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I think he's supposed to be like he thinks he's a player, but he's also maybe not as much of a player as he thinks. Like he's a little nerdy, but I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's atypical. It is. A typical Netflix type show. Uh, oh, look what but you did there. <laughs> thank you. There you go. There you go. That's that's there it is. And there it is. But it is, you know, it's a it's a drama and the pearl clutching has to happen because that's what Netflix does and it's fine, but it's not great and yeah, it's a typical Netflix show. Oh, I will leave you with that. So thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you next time. Cheers, everyone. Oh My Word podcast is brought to you by the Pearl Clutching Basement Dwellers at Oh My Word. Follow us on Instagram for updates at Oh My Word podcast, or like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For full episode notes and details, visit eltenabam.com. Music is by Tim Berg. See you next time.